Hi there, I'm Darrell Williams from Senior Bytes, and this is tutorial number three uh, using a TV USB dongle that plugs into a PC or laptop. Uh, I bought this online, it was about, uh, I think it was $17, it was nothing, Australian, $17. And yeah, I'm able to track aircraft. So, uh, Tutorial 1 I showed you how to install uh, the RTL SDR Dump 1090. Okay, 1090 is a frequency that planes transmit on, uh, giving out details of their call sign, their position, altitude, speed, and so forth. Uh, and the second one was installing virtual radar, and but unfortunately it was uh, late at night where there was no aircraft flying. Now I live uh, around Wollongong which is a regional area of New South Wales so yeah not many aircraft are flying overhead uh, during the night. Okay so to get started we need to start dump 1090 by the way yes I have plugged in the TV dongle that's why uh, in tutorial one it didn't work it is definitely plugged in so I have a folder on my C drive called RTL SDR I've got SDR sharp that's a spectrum analyzer I have a tutorial on that and then I've got 10 dump 1090 and what we look for is dump 1090 bat the bats file double click that and we're getting this information, it's found a device and yeah it's already got, it's already uh, tracking signals from aircraft uh, this is a, a unique ID, this number here, the hex number okay uh, that's the call sign or the, or the flight number that's the altitude uh, the highest one is 3000 meters speed highest is 431 kilometers an hour and it's got details of its latitude and longitude so that's working which is great and uh, during the day there will be a huge amount of aircraft showing on this so I'll just minimize that and this one here now the next step is to start up virtual radar so I'll type in the search box this is Windows 10 by the way here we go, virtual radar. Now in tutorial 2 I showed you all the settings and now the settings are working. Uh, right, so we're getting a signal here. Then the messages, it's connected. Now you need to keep this window open. You can minimize it down the bottom, but you have to keep this open because it is running a server. So here's a link to the server. So that 127.0.0.1 is the IP address for the local host on this computer. No one on the network can see this. You can change your IP address and then people on your network uh, can uh, view what's, uh, what the um, virtual radar is picking up. So several people can look at it at the same time. This is a server. So we click this link to open up virtual radar okay so we have an aircraft here VHYQS and over here we can see details it's a Qantas aircraft uh, no detail it's a twin engine aircraft it's going from Sydney to Canberra we also have another aircraft that's just popped onto the map uh, VH, VWX, so click that. These images are coming uh, from on online. Okay, it gives you the details where the image is coming from. And this aircraft here over the ocean is Sydney to Melbourne, Australia. And it may not show, uh, there it is. Okay, so there was a gap there. And this aircraft is still going, I'll just zoom out with a scroll wheel so 
Now, the antenna is the antenna that came with the dongle. Now, in the past, I have had the uh, the antenna on top of my desktop computer, which is under the desk, and now uh, I've got it about a meter and a half higher. So it, I'm sitting down; it's almost level to my head or above my head, I should say. And yeah, it's getting a longer distance. So it would be interesting if uh, I had an antenna up on where the TV mast is, and just see what a difference the signal would be. Obviously, it would get a better signal. Uh, not so many, uh, not many aircraft coming through. Uh, although I have had a line of aircraft, about four of them, following each other and they were all going to Melbourne. Yeah. So, it's, it's, I don't know, I really like watching these aircraft. The aircraft flying around over uh, where I live. Uh, I can hear the planes before they even show on the radar. You become uh, sensitive to the sound. Okay, one of the settings, you can alter settings, you've got a menu here, click that. And I haven't touched these settings, so I just go here. Okay, you've got general settings, you've got settings for your map, uh, information about the aircraft, and so forth. Okay, I haven't touched that. They're all default. Uh, this here is kilometers. Uh, I think originally it was in miles and feet. So I've changed that to uh, the Australian standard, which is metric. Okay, now another thing is, and this is restrictive, you've got reports. So I'll click that, today's flights, okay, so I'll just raise this up a bit, well I don't have to, but still, okay, so if I click this one, try the next one, okay, so it shows me when it came into my radar, and when it disappeared. Okay, so you got the map there, you got details. Now these here are flags and what I did was I just went to the various websites for the different uh, airlines, grabbed what their, uh, what would you call it, their logo and then reduced the size so it fit there. You have here silhouette for aircrafts so there is a website where you can get silhouettes where uh, it's like the slide profile of an aircraft. They all look different. You can tell what type of aircraft they are. So that's a nifty little feature. So yeah. And it's got the duration, how long they were there. That one was for nine minutes. Okay, it's got the details. So it's a civilian aircraft, regional express, yeah, very interesting. So that's it, virtual radar is working, I hope you give it a try. There's a lot more that can be done that I'm not saying as yet, so you'll have to wait for the future tutorials of that. So I'm Daryl Williams from Senior Bytes, I hope you enjoy this tutorial as much as I enjoy using this uh, software. Uh, if you have any questions or comments please leave them below this video on YouTube and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. In the meantime you have a good day and for now goodbye.